Hey there, I'm Shy Fox, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the six best tools in Clip Studio Paint for making beautiful, clean, and easy line art. Line art doesn't have to be painful. If you take the time to learn what these tools are, you'll be making wicked line art before you know it, even if all you have is like a computer mouse. Uh, there are tools to help with that too. So let's go see what these tools are. After this video, I'm planning to make a video with all the tips I can think of to improve your line art, which is not focused so much on the tools and rather focused on the approach, technique, and strategies for making professional looking line art. It will compile all my best knowledge to help you towards becoming a line art master. And I'll put a link in the top right in the description so that you can find that video at your convenience. And on that note, like and subscribe while you're here to see more of my art tutorials and new ones as they come out and comment if you have any video requests. Almost all of the Clip Studio Paint features I'm about to show you need to be used in combination with vector layers. These are just a special layer type to allow us to manipulate what's on the layer and almost everything I'm going to show you won't be possible on a regular layer or raster layer anyway. Now you can see here's line art for an artwork that I made. This is the finished artwork. It's kind of cute. And this is what a vector layer looks like. You can always make one by going up here and hitting new vector layer. It's the layer with a cube symbol. So the very first tool we're going to talk about is the stabilizer. And I find my line art is best done when my strokes are literally slower and I use computer technology to help me out by smoothing out those lines for me and compensating for the shaky jittery hands that we often, you know, get when we're trying to make our lines. So to demonstrate to you, uh, if we draw a line, I've got my stabilizer on, looks kind of smooth. Um, but if I turn it off, I uh, put my stabilizer way down the low, then it really makes, I can move my uh, brush really fast, but it might make some of those curvy lines a little wonky. It just, if you zoom in on this, you just, it just does not, this does not look nice. It doesn't look clean, doesn't look smooth. Now every single brush or pen or pencil tool has their own slider for stabilization. You'll have to actually click on each individual tool to change it. So if I click on, let's say this pen tool, I've got my slider here for stabilization. And right now it's set to 40, which is seemingly what I've been drawing with lately. Every tablet seems to have sort of different sensitivities to the stabilizer. So while I might be using 40, 40 might not be the number you should be using, okay? So you may need to adjust this, get a feel for it. What does it feel like when you draw? And I find that during line art phases, I actually have the stabilization much higher. You can actually click the number two and go as high as 100 for max stabilization. I've seen advice not recommending people get used to a stabilizer as it's important not to rely on it and practice stabilizing your own hand as a drawing skill. Now, I disagree as digital artists, we should be using our digital tools. We are just that, we are digital artists. So we do use digital tools. And I found over time as I've practiced and been drawing digitally for years and years, I actually rely on my stabilizer less and have been turning it down slowly over time, but I still like it. We're constantly using digital art tools and why would this tool be any different? The main thing is I want you guys to not feel guilty for using it. The next tool that we're going to go on to is the object tool, which allows you to manipulate your lines. This is one that I use constantly while creating line art. Uh, note you must use vector layers to be able to adjust your lines with the object tool. If you don't see the object tool in your toolbar, it might be clicked on something else. So you just gotta go to your sub tool for it and find object tool. As you can see, the icons do change when you click different uh, sub tools here. So anyway, object tool and what this can do for you is you can move a line around if it's not quite right. I find myself uh, adjusting lines a lot and I'll show you examples while I created this piece of how I used it and I use it a lot. It prevents me from having to redraw, redraw, redraw. If a line is close but not quite there, I just slightly move it, slightly adjust it. Now, in order to be able to actually do what I was just doing in the object tool and the tool properties, all your settings should be relatively the defaults. But the one thing you do need to change is where it says mode 
and you want to change it to free transform so that it allows you to click anything and freely transform it. I don't use any of the other modes at all, like at all, but you can test them out if you want. I find the free transform is just fine and that's all I use. There's a couple other settings in the object tools tool properties that are worth noting. So I want to show you one of them. If you were, let's say, finish this whole drawing and you're like, man, I wished I used a different brush. I wish I had tried something else. You can actually change the brush you used after the fact. So for example, we could change it to spray just to show you how much that can change things. Wow, that's kind of wild. We could change it to watercolor. Okay, so you kind of get the idea. You can also change the brush size, which is going to do pretty well. Obvious things, pretty straightforward. What that does. You can even change the brush size for a single line when you click on it. You can also change the color of your entire uh, layer of lines, switch it up. If you didn't want to change the entire layer and you just want to select individual lines, you could also do that. So our third tool is the transform tool. It's kind of similar to the main use of our object tool for making those small adjustments to our lines. But this is what I use when I want to adjust more lines and not just a single line. To demonstrate how to use this, let's say I wanted to fix this ear. I wanted to move it or enlarge it or something like that. So I'm just going to lasso it, grab it because it is still on the same layer with everything else. So to just use this part, I have to do my best to select it and then I can go to edit, uh, transform, and then I like to use the free transform again and then I can adjust it. I can change its angle something like that, right? I can even shorten it. It may change like thicknesses of your line, so it's something to be mindful, but you get the gist. The only other one I would use is the edit transform scale if I wanted to make this bigger or smaller hold shift and can shrink it or enlarge it. So with the transform tool, you really only have two options for how to adjust your lines. You can either adjust a section with the lasso tool or you can actually do the entire layer if you want to do that too. Maybe you just want to like slightly narrow the artwork. I find myself making that move sometimes. The fourth tool I'm going to show you is the figure tool. So in your tool palette here, you just go down to the one that says figure you can hover it says figure and the image will change depending on what you've selected the first three sub tools of the figure tool are pretty straightforward but the one i want to focus on is the continuous curve tool it is insanely useful it's really great in those moments when you just can't quite get the shape right and you're ready to give up well you'll whip out the continuous curve so that you can finish that line that you're trying to do and move on. This is also the tool, the tool you would use if you were making line art with your computer mouse. I'm actually going to use my computer mouse right now and show you how to use it. So continuous curve, let's say I need to draw this ear shape in and I just can't get it or this is just what I'm using. And we just click and go around. Might take a little practice, but at the tip, you know, we need more dots there. So you get kind of the idea there. And in the next tool tip, I'm going to have um, answers for you how to make adjustments from here. It's going to be really important. But the continuous curve tool really comes in handy when you have those awkward rounded shapes or lines as well that you just can't seem to draw. And speaking of round, you could also just use the circle tool or the ellipse tool for those round shapes right about here. Just click and click or shift click to make it perfectly round. And the rest of these uh, sub tools of the figure tool are pretty straightforward. So I'm not going to show you those uh, now. You can check those out yourself if you like. Tool number five is the correct line tool. So on your toolbar again, you just find correct line. There are several sub tools of the correct line tool I want to show you and we'll just go in order. The first one is the control point and I will note that it works really, really well with the continuous curve. So when I said I was going to show you in a second what to do after we had drawn this with the continuous curve, the control point tool gives all the points of the line and those appeared based on where we clicked. Now when you draw with a regular like pen or something, it, you know, 
automatically puts in these points for you and there's a lot of them. So to make adjustments is really, really hard. But because we clicked with um, our mouse individually, we manually put those clicks in, they're spaced a lot further apart. There's not as many of them you could say. So it's a lot easier to make adjustments that are actually like reasonable. It's not reasonable in this case to try and make an adjustment as you can see. <laughs> the combination of the continuous curve and this one is powerful. It means that even if you were the shakiest, trashiest, most unstable line art drawer ever, you could in fact make smooth, beautiful lines. And this combo is the combo for artists trying to draw with a computer mouse. And so yes, it is possible. And I just wanna show you that the setting here under tool property, depending on what you pick here, does different things. Mainly the only ones that probably matter and I usually leave it on add control point is this one. So add control point, and it means you can add them in if you felt you needed to. And then uh, while you can add control points, it also gives you the option to move them. So the add, lets you add and move. And then the only other one you probably need is delete. But I suppose you could also just use the move control point in case you didn't want to accidentally add any points. I have on the odd occasion used the simplify vector line. So I'm going to show you what that does. Uh, so this comes in handy if you were like, let's say not using the continuous curve to draw and you've got a bajillion points and you want to simplify the line. In other words, make less points. So if I wanted to do maybe this line, the catch with this tool though, is the fact that to simplify and have less points, it actually changes the line itself. So then you do have to go back to the control point tool and make the adjustments, but you will have simple simplified the number of points in the line. Most cases I don't I don't use this tool. The connect vector lines actually makes two lines join each other. You can play with that, but a very very important one here is the adjust line width and I use this one all the time. So let's click on that. You can go thicken and you can adjust how much thicker it's going to be. I'd like it to be two brush sizes bigger, please. And then highlight what you want to change and voila, it's thicker. Make it thicker and do the opposite and narrow. One of the issues with the continuous curve tool is that it doesn't add any variation to thickness and thinness of parts of your line. So you can manually put that in to give that variation. Like if you were drawing with a mouse, you don't have the pressure in your strokes. So you'd have to manually put that in and this makes that possible. It would take longer, but it's possible. In a lot of my artworks, one thing I tend to do is I like to have thicker lines on the edges of the artwork. So kind of silhouetting around the whole outside of the art or around key sections of the art. Like the jawline is kind of like one of those main lines that I like to have thicker. So just anywhere I want the lines to be thicker. So I do tend to go back and use this tool quite a bit. One kind of like really important and secret little tip here is if you click process whole line, uh, this allows you to do whatever you're about to do to the entire entire line. So this would actually be useful if I was doing the silhouette of the whole thing. Um, Cause then instead of like trying to go along and like, ooh, skip there because of what's what else is there. Instead of having to do that, I can just click and the whole line is done. So. Boom, boom, boom. Pretty straightforward, hey? So our sixth and final tool that we're gonna look at is the vector erase. Again, this only works with vector layers. You can find the vector erase in the eraser tool and then sub tool is vector here. So I'm gonna demonstrate first just drawing and a situation where you would need to use it. So often like drawing hair. So there's gonna be sections where these hair pieces overlap as I'm drawing them and I will show you what you can do. So let's go back to our vector erase and with it we can just erase where they intersect. So again just touching right there and it'll erase where the lines intersect. A real zoomed in look for you at what that does and then also here where the tips of the hair meet we can just 
touch there and it erases at the intersection. We got another spot there so we can just quickly, and this is all about speed too, just quick, 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 erase, you know, wherever we need to erase and you kind of get the idea. So I showed you how to use the vector erase with the intersection setting, but if you use the whole line setting, it will erase the whole line. So instead it would erase this whole line if I used it instead of at the intersections. If we did the intersection setting, then it's only gonna erase in between the intersections like so. Now that you have the tools, the question remains, how do you actually go about creating awesome line art? Like what tips can I give you to make your line art look amazing and professional? So you can check out my follow-up video after this with tips to help you master the art of creating line art, the techniques and the strategies for line art. When that video is made, there'll be a link here in the top right and in the description for you to grab. Leave a like if this video was useful to you and make sure you subscribe so that you can see future art tutorials from me. And I'm also curious to know which of the tools I showed you today are you most excited about? So comment to let me know which one. And I hope you guys have a really great day. I'll see you in the next video.